Well, hello and welcome to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how do you file a claim uh, with TRICARE to be reimbursed for medical services. Now, I'm a retired um, service member. And as such, I receive one of the benefits that I have is TRICARE. And I don't live in the United States, so I cannot use VA services overseas. Actually, you can in certain places, but that's not what this video is about. But as far as TRICARE is concerned, I'm able to use my TRICARE in to bill that back to uh, TRICARE to be reimbursed. Now, I will link the video that we did before where we spoke about who can do it and what do they look for in order to file a claim with TRICARE. But for this video specifically, we're going to be talking about how do you go through the steps. Now, if you have TRICARE Prime, this video is not for you. This video is specific to those who have TRICARE Select. And why is that? That is because TRICARE Prime, that will require you to get an authorization to go see a provider or to go see someone out of network. So with the TRICARE Select and we're out of country, we're able to see out of network providers and bill TRICARE to be reimbursed for a portion. Now, before I go too far into this, just keep in mind, and I covered this in a video that I did a few weeks ago, you're not going to receive 100% of what you paid into it. You receive a max of 75% after you've um, met your deductible. So one of the first things you're going to need to make sure is that you have a DS login in order for you to submit this claim because it's going to go through a secure portal. So the simplest way to put this is whatever you receive from the medical office, I would just go ahead and scan all that information up, upload it into the file so that you can submit it. Once you've logged into the system and you're on the home screen, you're going to go to on the left hand side, you'll see file a claim. I suggest that you take the time to um, set up your direct deposit information. That way they're not sending you a hard copy check. It can go directly to your bank account. but for this video, we're going to go to file a claim. It's going to tell you immediately that you need to download this form, which is a DD2642. The last form that I was filling out, the last time it was updated was November 2018. However, there's a new DD2682, and that form was updated in September 2024. So I went ahead and just filled out new version, which is a September 2024 version. So starting with number one, put in your name, your phone number, patient address. I put all the forms that I've uh, submitted so far, and I think I've done three for myself, one for my wife. And I've always used my state side address here in case they need me to send, send me a mail. Uh, I can get it because I can't receive mail here in Mexico. Um, where did you receive the service? Uh, Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. This is for myself, but if it was for your spouse or your child, you're going to put that information there. Um, your date of birth, sex, all that information, um, work related or not, you select no, whatever it is, and what's the purpose um, for under block eight. It's an annual checkup is what I'm going to select just for the purpose of this video. Outpatient services and uh, urgent care is what I'm going to select for both of these. Once I get to, um, you have to put your sponsor's uh, name again because Keep in mind that you possibly could be filling this out for your spouse or your child. And if so, your inform their information would go on the first line. Um, so here you would put your information. In this case, it's for me, so I'm re-putting my information. Put the sponsor's social security number. If you're a veteran, you know, no matter what you do, it's always a sponsor's social security number. It has nothing to do with um, them not having rights. Select no, I don't have any other forms for uh, insurance. However, if you do have another form like say Social Security or Medicare, not Social Security, Medicare, then you put that information there and select those boxes that apply. Do not forget that you need to sign this form. So 12A, you need to sign the form. So for the purpose of this, I, use, I did a digital signature. However, I can tell you that they, they will not take a digital signature unless you're using a CAT card. Um, the date that you received it for yourself and so that's pretty much all you need to do, but this needs to be submitted for every, each and every time that you file a claim, you have to do one of these. So now that you have downloaded the DD2642, next you're gonna select your family member. Now you're going to enter the date of care. 
So just say I went into the doctor today, it was an outpatient, so it was for today. Were you admitted? No. Um, what country? Your bill is gonna need to show paid in full or paid or zero balance. Don't send it in showing that this is the amount for the service without sending in the amount that was paid for the service, okay? Pay service, you can put in any additional information here if you'd like. Um, I generally don't. This is where you're gonna upload those files. And then you're just gonna repeat that multiple times to attach all the documents that you have. This is what they responded to me because at some point I sent in something and it didn't contain all this information right here. So you need the name and the physical address of the provider. So it, it would make sense if you get a, a, an invoice, make sure that the doctor's name and physical address of the, the, the doctor's office is on that invoice. The date that you received the service, the type of service that you received, um, the diagnosis, you may have that in a supporting uh, documents or attachment if you had to have, uh, you know, like say x-rays, blood work, lab works, or something like that. Have all that information. Granted, that may not be on the invoice, but it may be on supporting documents. And last but not least, you need the patient's address. Now, this address is going to be the address for where you live. So what I generally do is I get to my doctor, I'll say, hey, here's my address for where I live in Mexico. A note on the bottom, balance due statement is not acceptable. So make sure that on that invoice that you receive, it says um, balance due zero, or there should be a stamp on there that says paid in full. When you submit your claim, what I've noticed is that each time the claim shows US dollars, as in I submitted a claim in US dollars, even though as you can see on the screen, it says in pesos, they will do a conversion and do the exchange rate maybe at the time at which the claim is being um, processed. Now on this screen, you will see that I have a total of five claims. Three have been approved most recently and the other two that go back maybe a year and a half ago, um, they weren't approved. Well, those were the very first two claims that I'd submitted. And honestly, I didn't know what I was supposed to do, what it's supposed to look like. But as you can see, of recent, all the claims that I've been submitting have been getting um, approved. Now, something to keep in mind, and I mentioned it earlier in the video, until you have met your deductible, you are not going to see the majority of what you spent out coming back in. And even then, you're only going to get back a total of 75%. But it's going to be way better than um, have you just if you just have to spend out of pocket. But for folks like us who decide to live out of the country, if you have TRICARE and you have, you're have you using TRICARE Select, you don't have to buy those expat insurance or whatever it is because this will cover you. As I've showed you, as you saw earlier in that drop down screen, in pretty much whatever country you go to, there are a few exceptions. I'm not gonna tell you what they are. You can look in the system, you can see them, but there weren't that many. Um, but for the most part, I think wherever you go, you're gonna be covered. So that's it. Um, that's the information I wanted to pass today, um, especially for our veterans that are living outside the United States. If you have any questions or if there's anything I did not cover, um, go ahead and drop it in the comments down below. If not, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you can notify next time we video. It's free and that's how we get uh, the video gets populated to other people or other, other people that are interested in the content. So thanks again and have a great day. Hasta luego. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below.